Canada, eh? <laughs> Welcome to Northern Wild Harvest. We're a multi-generational group of friends and family that harvest wild edibles and medicinal plants here in Canada. Our passion and interest in wild harvesting is an opportunity to really get to know and learn from the different locations where we temporarily live. We also wanted to show what it's like to be involved in Canada's wild harvesting industry. From wild mushrooms and wild plants to traveling through the vast wilderness of Canada. We go where the harvest takes us. It also gives us a chance to share with you these remote places that people rarely get to see or would have no other reason to go. The majority of our focus in BC and the Yukon. Learning how to dry and process products while in the field has been a real challenge. It has taken decades of trial and error. One of the more exciting and prolific harvests of the year is the morel mushroom season. We harvest morels in the spring following a forest fire, where they have a short burst of growth as the forest begins to rejuvenate. Fire morel harvesting is unique in that we only harvest in a location for one spring following a forest burning. I'm Randy. For me, harvesting wild products has been a lifelong endeavor. From harvesting wild blueberries in Northern Ontario, to the responsibility of setting up and maintaining a snare line for rabbits. My interest in wild mushrooms started in the 60s, when my father and I were scouting a trout creek for better fishing spots. And I noticed some weird mushrooms growing in the willows. And I said to my dad, what are those mushrooms? Morels, he said, with excitement. And the rush began a lifelong endeavor. During the 1980s, the focus was with pine and chanterelle mushrooms. In 1990, we ventured into the Yukon for morels, a caravan of colorful individual pickers. This kick started a yearly convoy of harvesters, which often included my sons. My name's Phil. I've been wild harvesting here in Canada with my father since about the time I learned to walk. When I was younger, I spent a lot of time in our mushroom patches and in our chanterelle buying station or selling dried products at my family's stall at the local farmer's market. Being immersed in wild foods and the environments they grow in has led to a fascination with nature and what it generously provides us. Over the last decade, there's been an increase in wildfires in BC and the Yukon. Usually, we were scouring through thousands of hectares of fire maps prior to the season. Only a very small percentage of these fires actually gets harvested each year, with many of them being too costly to reasonably access. After many active fire years, BC and the Yukon had a much needed break, and there were very few wildfires compared to recent years. It also gives us a chance to take you along with us for our 2021 morel season. Randy and I are joined by my cousin Tom and our close friend Alex as we make our way through British Columbia to one of the very few wildfires large enough to harvest. We hope you enjoy.
So you gotta kind of do a little bit of everything, don't you? Do whatever you gotta do. You do a bit of that today and a bit of that tomorrow, and you do a bit of that and do a bit of that.
Here we are setting up camp. We've just got a sunshade up and it's batting down. Hopefully it survives. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but there's sleet coming in sideways and high winds. Morel camp on the side of a mountain. So we woke up to a blizzard today. It was total white out, couldn't see further than maybe a hundred feet in any direction. But the mushrooms are still growing. If you look there, the whole mountain has fresh snow. So we'll continue to work on camp over the next couple days while the mushrooms are still growing. They're not quite big enough to pick yet. And uh, we'd like to have camp nice and set up by the time they are ready so we can focus on harvesting and uh, our camp will be nice and easy to work in and everything will be ready to go. All the poles we're using, all the trees were already downed and had been laying on the ground for at least a couple of years. None of them were green. We didn't kill any trees to get these poles. They were just sitting there and we cleaned them up. Yep, they're all fire kill. I'm gonna go around everything here. See? Yep. Like so. That can come in and out with your wash water. Dish drainers. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but we got that. not happy but then I looked down on the ground and there was a file in the middle of all this wilderness at my feet was a file What we've done is we've dug a pit that slopes up this way and in the back along this rock here we've dug it extra deep and we're going to put more rocks there so when we dump our wash totes from our dish drainer this blue wash tote will be filled with water and we should be able to dump it down the back of this rock and drain down into all of our loose rocks underneath the fire and it'll burn off all the food and wash water underneath.
So this Dutch oven will sit like that. So you put coals underneath and coals on top. I've got the lower tarp below and this one above. That way water can't go between them onto my tent. The whole thing is under tensor strength. So it can handle the high winds. And over here, got a nice little alcove for all my stuff. So I've got my pack board and bucket. And I've got my baskets, lids, a tote with a bunch of different gear, my chainsaw over there, and my guitar. This is home for the next month or two. Comfy. This here is our cooler box. So what, what he's done is he's lined the whole thing with door skin and a nice plywood top. And on the inside, our cooler sits in there and we've got two layers of this insulating foam. And uh, we put our block ice in the bottom, all the cube ice on top. And we've had ice last in, this, in the cooler here for over three weeks before. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. We've been stuck in camp for a day and a half. This is the first break in the rain I've had. It's been pouring rain for about 36 hours straight, just coming down and uh, waiting for the ground to dry out a little bit. It's just too wet to go out right now, but it stopped raining finally. You can see the mist is starting to lift over here. Before you couldn't you can see these trees here. It was totally underneath cloud cover, socked in. Come on, son, burn it off. So when we're out here working in the forest fire, it's a pretty dirty job and we don't have real facilities. Everything we can't bring, we have to make. This is our bush shower. Cold water in this. And then we just use a bucket. I was up to a rope which is suspended here, here, and then back this way to hold it center. And the whole thing is on a pulley system. So that goes up, latches around this, and in the bottom of the bucket, you can see there's five holes. One big one in the center and then four little ones here, here, and around and you can sit on here nice rocks to stand on so basically what we do is we heat up water on the fire a big pot you carry that over and you you fill that with you know, maybe a quarter bucket of cold and then you dump in your pot of hot water you raise it up and you got a nice hot shower and the last one i took was probably about 10 minute shower 
<laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but <laughs> you can see that. You can see the funny part of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had it happen to me. under the rocks steams out no bears tonight Not a whole lot holding that tree there. I probably shouldn't stand here for very long. Well, see you later. That's no problem. We're gonna go up to the top of this hill and see what it looks like. I have a feeling it's gonna be good. It's morels everywhere. They just speckled all through there. So that whole black spot was loaded with morels. That's quite a bit of volume there and that was back that direction and now we're just walking along the top of this ridge and it's a nice easy trail. Nice and windy up here. We can walk right out and we're gonna come out about 100 meters down from our camp. It was a pretty good day of scouting. Our half day. We, we should gotta go for another walk up to the water. We did, uh, well, probably about seven and a half kilometers on that scout, but a lot of it was on terrain like this. So we're gonna go back and have a late lunch and then go do some more scouting. Now look at the size of some of these. That one's pretty average. Now here's a nice big one. This is, this is a decent sized morel. A nice one there's a bunch there can you spot the morels there 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 over there naturals All through here, we've seen probably 50 clusters like this. They're just starting, and I don't know if you can see, but there's, let's just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If I got them all, 18 morels, and that's only about just over a square foot.
They're all just starting. It's a pretty good looking patch. And they go along through here and they follow this sort of crooked line. And this whole hillside we just came down, all through this rock, it's just absolutely loaded. And look what we're entering now. This is going to be even better down here. Take you through the village. The metropolitan village. And over to where Alex is. That's a nice cluster. Wow. That is impressive. And they're still coming. Look how small those two are. <laughs> What's that? This is a good sign. Thanks, look at that clustering. We're going picking today in a new spot. Spending the morning drinking coffee with our pet moose. We're gonna hike down through a big ravine and try to get to a new area today. Got my backboard all set. And there's our pet moose hanging out in camp. Here we've got a huge larch tree, western larch. Look at that. It's a deciduous conifer, so it loses its needles in the winter and regrows them every spring. But it has cones. Not normally this big around here. And going down is going to be easy, but Coming back up, if we get mushrooms, we'll be a bit harder. Labrador tea. We, we see this a lot on our travels. And it, it is a tea you can harvest, but it's uh, not as sustainable to harvest as other things, so you do want to be selective. But in the north, there's a whole lot. Okay, so now we've got to go up this hill. Before we go up this, we're probably going to walk over down the fire break to where it's burnt and then climb. We've reached the burn. We just came from there down that fire break. And this looks to be the easiest way up. There's sort of a trail. So we'll head up here and then come in on the left. Rather than trying to go up that, it's a lot steeper. Another hill, <laughs> of course. Swimming through the trees. Okay.
Those are my boots. There's mushrooms through here, but they're small. So we're still just walking through this blackened burn, which can be really good fire morale sometimes. And uh, in this direction here, I can hear a creek running. So we're gonna go check that where there's water and see if it's further ahead. Usually the waterways do well. And there's lots of babies here, like lots of babies. But hopefully the there's a few that are almost ready. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the waterway is further ahead. So these ones are a bit bigger. They're bigger than my thumb. You can tell there was a lot of uh, fuel on the ground here. Those are small, so these have just come up look, overnight, look, probably. Look at these. They're just still popping like crazy. Created by that. So right here, there was a big log that totally burnt away. All the way along here. Loaded. With morels. We just walked another two or three hundred meters through this, heading this way, and uh, there's babies all through there, but none of them are ready to pick. That's how it goes. So now we're heading up here, we're gonna get up on top of this little hill and get a better viewpoint. And then I know from the GPS that if we go that way, we'll hit another creek and see how that's doing. Go from there. 24. 24. In a square foot. Right here, there's 24. But they're tiny. So most of this walk, we've been seeing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and they go. It's just a waiting game now. And it's hard to wait when you know they're here and somebody else could come and grab them. <laughs> you look down there, there's dirty snow. See? Ice. No wonder it's so chilly here. Take like a big ice box. Welcome to the club. That's a bad joke. Well, didn't find anything ready on that scout. Didn't even pick a single mushroom, but we saw probably thousands of babies. Now we're just hiking back down this fireman's trail to the fire break and then that big hill up to the Jeep. Probably come back here in a week and see how it's grown. One more big hill down and one more big hill up. And then we're back. We'll keep going, try to find another spot after that. I 
Got to go up to the top of this. Here's our little scout we just did. That was three hours and one minute. We've just stopped in this other spot here. We're gonna walk through this select logged area and work towards that ridge in the distance. You can see through here it didn't burn as hot. All this green is already starting to regrow. And there's ferns and grass and other plants. Maybe some arnica coming up there. Here's one. Two, three, four, five. The rest are too small. Kind of small. <laughs> 